Hey everyone, welcome to the first Bay State Golf Podcast of 2024. I have some hopes that I'll be publishing pods on a more regular basis this year. That might mean I hop on solo and share some thoughts, or I track down guests to join me different times of the year. Of course, the major season will always have my buddy Burke on to make some horrible predictions and talk about the majors. Today, I thought it might be fun to offer some extended thoughts on my 2023 golf course rankings that I posted on Instagram over the last couple of weeks. I don't personally love doing golf rankings, but it is a good exercise to flesh out the year I had in golf and checking off some new courses in my quest to play them all. I'm also going to post this on YouTube and hopefully post most of my podcasts on YouTube this year. It's another little New Year's resolution I have. Um, That will sometimes come with pictures and video of the golf courses I'm talking about. That is the plan for this one. So head over there if you are looking for maybe some visuals of the golf courses. And if you're already here watching on YouTube, welcome. And please subscribe wherever you are listening so you find out when I post new stuff on here or on any podcatcher that you have. All right, so let's get to some extended thoughts on the 25 new courses in Massachusetts that I played in 2023 as I try to play, review, and photograph every course in my home state. All right, so let's start at the bottom. I have, uh, I've kind of organized a lot or all the golf courses I've played into different tiers based on restaurants. And um, the lowest tier are the dive bar golf courses that I've played. Dive bars being, you know, if you're looking for a good time, looking to crack some beers, low pretense, maybe you're in jeans or a t-shirt, hoodies, whatever, uh, you can kind of show up and and come as you are, play golf, enjoy it. I know you're not going to get you're not going to get great conditions. You might see some cool stuff. You might not see some cool stuff. And it might be just a total drag uh, and a dog track because that happens too. And I played a, a handful of dive bars this year. The The bottom chunk of golf courses, anytime you're trying to play a ton of new golf courses, is going to be uh, is going to be pretty bad. Then the middle, which I found this year, is super mediocre and you end up seeing you know a lot of places that feel the same they have good they have bad they have some serious warts um and really kind of ranking those 10 in the middle feels like you could wake up one morning put them all in order and then do it all again the next day do it all again the next hour and end up with some different spots um and places in different spots and then at the top you've kind of got your creme de la creme, you could still argue for some places being maybe flipped one or two spots. Uh, Sometimes that just comes down to people's preferences. Uh, Sometimes it just comes down to my preferences. Sometimes it comes down to my mood. Um, I try very, very hard though to separate the experience that I had playing. That means maybe who I'm playing with. If I'm playing a place with complete strangers. Um, I also try to separate how I played. I found that some of my favorite holes and holes that I really like uh, are ones that I don't necessarily play well. And I think sometimes that's because they're good holes and I'm sometimes not a good golfer and they challenge me or you end up in a spot where you realize, oh man, this is what makes this a good hole. This pushed me to hit my tee shot kind of down the left side. And now I've got a tough approach shot because I was playing away from a hazard or away from water or out of bounds or whatever. Um, So I try very hard to separate that out. With the bottom courses, it's pretty easy. Um, You know, I show up to to dive bars and feel like, you know, I'm not trying to score. I know I'm not going to get greens that are relatively puttable. Um, I'm not going to get great lies if I miss uh, a green. I'm not going to. I'm going to end up in funky bunkers because the bunkers have no sand in them. So a lot of the times the bottom ones are kind of fun to rank in that way because you are just trying to unpack like the best things from places that that are not great. I also believe that every golf course has some good stuff and has some cool stuff to see, uh, has one or two good shots that, you know, make you think about on the car ride home 
or if I was going back to a particular golf course, would have me excited to to play again. So I'm going to start at number 25. I'm not going to do a big long diatribe on each one of these. Uh, we'd be here all day, but I do think kind of hitting on some of these golf courses uh, maybe gives people some insight into my ranking, insight into if you want to go play this place, um, if you're able to play it, and you know. Maybe it's a place that's near and dear to your heart and I did not like, and I apologize for that, but <laughs> that's kind of how these things work. Or maybe it's a place you absolutely hate and you have no idea why I have it above another place. Um, and so I'm hoping to maybe explain some of those things. Number 25 is a golf course that if it was any bit well-conditioned, if it was cared for at all, would be in this case, in this year, from what I saw at this place, as far as the routing and the land it was on, it would be maybe a top 15, possibly crack the top 10. And that's Elmcrest Country Club. There are some stories about this place. And there are some pictures that I took and some video that I took of red X's on clubhouses. Um, I showed up to this place. Here's just a quick story about my experience at Elmcrest. My wife and I were lucky enough to have a couple of nights at Great Horse. And I wanted to check off one other golf course before I got got to play Great Horse. And I looked around and I found Elmcrest right down the road. It's an eight minute drive from Great Horse. And we were staying at Great Horse's, one of their lodges. Um, I'll get to that later on in the pod. And I looked it up. The website looked pretty good. Pictures were, you know, green, lush, looked like it was a well-maintained golf course. Could not make tee times on the internet. So I called. And when I called, the guy who answered the phone basically said, we have tea times open all day. Just come whenever. So I thought, okay. So we arrived to Elmcrest about an hour and a half before my tea time. We got, we just got on the road earlier or not before my tea time, but before I was meeting my friend to play, uh, my friend Dan joined me for this one and for the, the couple of rounds of great horse. And I could kill time at a golf course. No problem. I could chip. I could putt for hours. I could. I figured maybe I'll sit down and have a hot dog, uh, a beer or soda before we go out. Um, really, I could do this at most golf courses. Elmcrest was not one of them. The clubhouse was completely uh, destroyed. They've had two kitchen fires, apparently. Um, so you couldn't even go into the clubhouse. The, the parking lot was empty aside from one car, which belonged to the guy who was taking money for, for, uh, for play which seemed a little bit ridiculous given the condition the golf course was in. He was working out of a shed that was just set up in the parking lot. You could kind of walk into it. It was almost like a container, uh, like a shipping container slash shed with some doors swung open. It was hot as hell the day we played early in September, uh, right after Labor Day. We got that big heat wave. And the golf course was uncut he said they were they hadn't cut in weeks and they were done cutting grass for the season this was early this was just after labor day and the, the day after labor day and he warned us you're going to lose a lot of golf balls out there and we did and we uh we went out we played all 18 holes we paid 20 bucks to walk um the front nine is pretty solid the back nine has some awesome potential. If anybody like Great Horse wanted to buy this place and bring it back to what it was apparently from people I've heard from in the 90s and the early 2000s and even up just before the pandemic, Elmcrest was a well-loved, uh, well-played, busy golf course. And and then you know COVID hits and they still have a lot of play, but they're not putting money into it. And I think these guys also own another golf course nearby whose name is escaping me right now. So uh, the experience was like nothing else I've seen. Uh, it was just a completely neglected. And when I say neglected, I, there's got to be, there's probably a word that's, uh, that's even stronger than neglected. I mean, the greens were completely overgrown or they were dirt. The bunkers were all hard pan or dirt. Uh, the rough was super long. The fairways were obviously long and uncut. We lost a ton of golf balls. Um, but it's a golf course that if it was taken care of, could be outstanding. Um, I would encourage Great Horse. I would, it would be awesome if Great Horse bought it 
and had another 18 hole golf course and they could maybe think about hosting something, um, on a bigger scale, uh, you know, nationally, if they needed 36 holes, I don't think a US AM would be the type of event, but something, you know, that you need to host courses to, uh, to make work. I think Elmcrest could handle it. I think Great Horse could handle it. I don't, I don't know. Um, y- you know, I don't know what the whole housing and living situation when you get a bunch of people out to play a golf course, but if they can do it in Nantucket, they can do it anywhere. So that's, uh, that's Elmcrest number 25. Uh, Wampanoag and Tuisset, I played on the same day after playing Swansea Country Club in the morning. So I played 36 holes this one day at three different courses. Uh, Wampanoag and Tuisset, I played super soggy. People call Wampanoag Swampanoag. It is land that is basically unbuildable. Um, the guy I played with said that the owner has, you know, kind of tried to to sell the land, but it's not land that can be developed. So it just kind of remains a golf course at high tide. There are spots that just flood naturally because of the way the, the tides work nearby, um, through the marsh. So just Wampanoag was 24 to was 23. Um, really, you know, one of those things you could kind of flip them, but if you, you know, the other rule for me is which place would I want to play? If you said I'm playing, you know, if I got a phone call from a buddy and said, we can play Wampanoag at nine o'clock in the morning or Tuisset, where would you want to go? I think I'd want to play Tuisset again over Wampanoag just because Wampanoag was it's just so consistently wet and soggy and doesn't seem like it ever gets any better. We had a wet season um, and this was really bad. Tuisset, the f- first few holes was also really wet. It's really narrow. Um, but there's a few holes kind of once you get out into the open that are kind of neat. Um, the, the, there's a par five, two par fives and a par three that kind of built, make a triangle. Um, that's our six, seven, eight, if memory serves correctly. And like, those are good holes. They're dry. You're kind of out in the open so you can let it rip after playing some holes that are really, really tight. The fourth hole is, is probably the best of the, of the 18 holes between Wampanoag and Tuisset, uh, it's just super tight. It feels like you're playing a little bit in a rainforest, but you're there's it has this really neat rock that you hit your approach shot, not necessarily over, but it's kind of in between you and the green. Um, so Tuisset comes in at 23, Wampanoag 24, Elmcrest 25, Strawberry Valley another nine holer in Abington. Um, this kind of just ended up above Tuisset and Wampanoag because it's it was just in a little bit better shape. Um, it was kind of firm. I played there in April. Uh, I kind of liked the the energy there a little bit more too. It had a few better holes. Um, it does have maybe one of the worst holes I've played. The third hole is is unbelievably bad. <laughs> um, I played it from the back tees, which I would not recommend anyone plays it back there unless you just want to experience what really bad golf is. Um, there's a sign that reads something like, if you hit it down the second fairway, uh, you will be removed from the premises because the temptation is you can kind of cut the entire dog leg and just hit it up the second hole from the, th- from the back tees of the third. But if you want to play it up the third properly, you have to play it basically your tee shot's going to make it as far as the red tees where the corner goes hard left. And then you've got another 300 yards roughly before you get to the green. It's a par five, uh, but you're hitting like five iron and then hitting whatever the heck you can as far as you want. And then trying to get on the green and make birdie or par. It's just a really bad hole. I've never seen a sign like that. Uh, we'll get to another funny sign when we get to furnace Brook as well, but that's number uh, 22. And twenty number twenty one to round out, round out the kind of the last the bottom five is Maynard Country Club. Um, this was my hundredth round in my quest to play them all. It was purposefully my hundredth round. I had kind of been saving it because this is where I grew up playing. I had not been back in oof, maybe fifteen twenty years. And uh, another little nine holer. It has so much potential, and it was kind of a a sad. Uh, rainy, dreary day in May. Um, played with two two friends, uh, Phil and Dan. Um, Dan, who has joined me for a lot of these rounds of golf, and and then Phil's son, um, who is a who's a golf fanatic. Uh, he's a he's five years old, and um, 
just loves golf. Pouring rain, we played nine holes and then we played four more and uh, and walked off. We had done the job. I had checked off the, the nine holes that I had to. Um, really good land, some really good par threes. I wish it was better. I wish the clubhouse, I remember the clubhouse being kind of a bustling place, uh, eating chicken fingers and chips and French fries and all that junk that uh, middle schoolers love to eat after playing nine holes. And I, I just remember playing loops and loops around that place. Uh, it could be really good. The second hole is, a, is another travesty that was used to be a par four. And just for the sake of making it a, adding one more stroke to the, to the par, they made a par five. Um, and it's, it's not a good par five. And it was a, it was really a kind of a cool par four. So I wish that was that returned back to a par four, but that's, uh, that's number 21. John Parker in Taunton is number 20. Another place that like, kind of like Maynard, I'd put them neck and neck. I could have put Maynard above John Parker. If, if there were things that were just a little bit better about Maynard. Um, but John Parker, uh, it, John F. Parker in Taunton is another nine holer had some, had some cool holes. They let me, I, you know, I paid 20 bucks cash. I went from my trunk to the first tee in six minutes on a Monday afternoon. seems like they have a pretty stellar little outdoor area where people just hang out. There were people playing cards. Um, you know, so a course kind of starts out. It's, it's relatively flat, not as much land as land movement as Maynard, which maybe could put it up above, uh, move Maynard up, but some good holes, some blind tee shots. Uh, you could definitely score a really good number there. Uh, some reachable par fives, uh, really good par three. Uh, let's see. It's the sixth hole. I found the seventh hole is a really good downhiller with a good green. Um, next up is Treehouse, the golf course at Treehouse, uh, the newest golf course I think I played. It used to be Tewksbury Country Club. Treehouse came in, uh, bought a huge building and all the the land that goes with the golf course. Uh, I guess it was a a very popular wedding venue up there, and they've kind of transformed it into Treehouse North. Um, as they slowly take over the, uh, the brewing world and just buy up real estate everywhere. It was a fine golf course. Um, there's a, there's a couple good little stretches and it's in better, you know, the conditions and you could just feel it has just a little bit of an edge on, you know, John F. Parker and Maynard, as far as some of the conditions and some of the kind of experience, I think it's a little tacky in some places, the huge, beer cans on each tee. They name each hole after one of their beers. Um, there's some things like you can tell they put, they put the money into kind of making the place have a little bit of a look versus being a, a good golf course. Uh, I don't know if they'll put money into it to improve it over time. You know, they kind of just, they got it. It floods really easily. I think they had to be closed for a couple stretches during the summer. But we'll see. I think it's really it's it'll be interesting to see if they put money into it because it could be a pretty good golf course. Um, it's approachable. It's manageable. There's some funny long walks between. You kind of play uh, one, two, eight, and nine are kind of shorter holes. Of those four, the only par four is the first. The second's a three. The eighth and ninth are both three. So you're those are all kind of close to the clubhouse and the and the the beer house, if you will. Um. And then you take a walk to get to holes uh, three, four, five, six, and seven, which are pretty good. Um, and then they have a really cool little beer hut after you play four holes that you kind of loop back around before you go play seven. So you can get a beer, uh, play f- holes, uh, sorry, holes five and six. And then after you play six, you come back to the beer hut. So you can grab a beer, play holes five and six, and then grab another one if you want. Um, no high alcohol beers out on the golf course. It was all it was all the low ABV stuff that they make, um, but kind of an, another perk of of going up there, and uh, and then you can buy some beer and take it home too. Um, Furnace Brook comes in next, and Furnace Brook is a golf course that was one of those kind of um, pleasant surprises. I played it in April. I played it the same day as Strawberry Valley. Um, just trying to cram in two rounds, looked at a map and thought I can go play Furnace Brook and Quincy. And then I'm south of the city. I'll just take advantage and maybe drive a little bit farther south and play Strawberry Valley. And Furnace Brook is really, really 
kind of good. It used to be private, so it's got some it's got some of those private vibes as far as the golf course. Um, I'm going to try to stop using the word vibes for like a 2024. I wonder if I can do that on these podcasts. It's such a crutch. But there's some good greens. There are some small greens. Um, the land is pretty extreme in some places. The first hole, my, I, I, had, I, was, I was playing with people who had never played there before. I have no idea where my tee shot went. It, it's probably in someone's yard. Um, just completely blind, way downhill. Definitely drivable if it's hot and dry um, in the middle of the summer, that first green. Um, the second, third holes were really good. The third hole was probably my favorite. Um, and you, you just get, you just get, so the clubhouse kind of sits up on a hill. You can see, uh, Boston Harbor, you can see planes coming into Logan. It's just, it's, it's kind of got a nice little feel to it for a nine holer, um, that I had never played. Definitely. You could tell that there's just some, there's some private, um, vestiges that are left behind. It gets a little quirky as you finish the round. So the first six holes are kind of on one side and then you take a little bit of a walk and you go play seven. I played seven on a school day, which means it was a par three because during school days or school hours, um, the par four tee box on seven is closed because there is a, there is a playground, um, pretty much directly left. Any rope hooks would absolutely hurt somebody, um, on the playground or a, a lefty slice. So you have to kind of make a little bit of a walk and play 155 yard, um, par three, the par four as a par four looks, looks kind of neat, big kind of split fairway. I'm not going to compare it to Essex County clubs, <laughs> eighth hole fairway, but it has that same like two plateau where you could hit it up to the right and have a look at the green, or you could try to kind of hit it down to the left and, uh, and take on the out of bounds and the, and the playground when there's no children there. But, and then it, so it gets a little bit funny in there and eight's kind of a tight little hole as well. Uh, but overall, I, I thought Furnace Brook was pretty good. Fresh Pond, another nine holer. I played in June at like I played super early in the morning um, with a couple with a couple buddies. Uh, I have played Fresh Pond before. I think this and Maynard, as far as courses I've talked about so far, are ones I've revisited but had not played since before 2020 when I started this whole quest. So. Fresh Pond, another, uh, you know, it's in it's in pretty good shape. It was way better than when I played it in the past. I probably played it most recently before this in 2017. Um, a couple little additions, some little like mounding, some a little bit of uh, like long grass in places, and it's just kind of a good little solid nine holer. It's in Cambridge, so as as a city dweller here in Boston. Um, it's pretty convenient if you're going to play that early in the morning. Uh, it's like a 12, 13 minute drive from where I live on the Northern tip of the city. And, you know, there's kind of a couple tee shots that are a little bit funky Four, I wish four was like a little bit better of a hole. As far as the tee shot, um, I can hit a kind of a ropey hook around a corner and hit a three wood. Um, but it's a good hole. I just, I just wish there was a little bit more space and then uh, five is a funky tee shot where you just have to make up your mind what you're going to do. Uh, it's a par five. There's a very small landing area. There's water right, uh, woods left, uh, need to be accurate. It's one of those that I would imagine if I played Fresh Pond all the time, it would slowly drive me crazy because I would try a bunch of different shots and end up in a million different places and end up in trouble a lot of the time. Uh, Juniper Hills, I played the Riverside course in Northboro. Um, that is the next one on this list. And I want to make sure that I've just got the numbers here because I realize I'm not bringing up numbers. So I think this is number 18 on the list. Juniper Hills in Northboro is my next course. I played the Riverside course. It is number 16 on my in my top 25 here. Um, played with three buddies uh, who... I got, the, the One of the beautiful things about doing this quest and playing a bunch of different places and just grabbing tea times, um, you know, the morning before the day I know I can play, or if the weather looks good and I hop on and it's a Monday and I make a tea time for a Tuesday and I just grab whatever single slot is available. 
you end up playing with a bunch of different people who have a bunch of different reasons for being out there. Sometimes you're with regulars, sometimes you're with people who have never played the golf course before. Uh, and that was the case this time. I was um, the extra in a group of, I think there were 12 or 12 to 14 guys um, all playing, celebrating a friend's 60th. People had flown in from Colorado and um, these guys had known each other since college. So like just to really, they were all so happy to be out and hanging out with each other. Uh, very nice guys. Um, so that made the, that made the round a lot of fun. Uh, they were not particularly good at golf, which I also do not care about. Um, but they, they, uh, they were great to play with. It was the best round I played all year. I shot even par, uh, which maybe, uh, colored this round a little bit as well. It was, they kind of loosened me up. Maybe I should hire them to play with me more often. Um, pretty good golf course. I, you know, this is kind of where you start to that, where I'm in this middle, middle tier here, right? 16 through maybe six. You could put Juniper Hills higher um, for sure um, if you wanted to, if you liked things about it. I, I, I liked it. There were some wet spots that seemed to always be the case. We had to play the ninth hole from basically the middle of the fairway because they'd had so much rain. Um, not, not kind of hitting it on that, but sometimes those things when it's like a normal occurrence, which it seems like it was uh, from, from what I heard from some folks when I was there, um, not great. Um, I'd played Juniper. I think I played it in college, um, in a tournament. I remember none of it, or I played the other, the other course cause they have 36 holes there. Um, the, I think the thing that stood out to me about Juniper Hills, as far as shots is there were, a f- there were some really cool approach shots into greens that greens are not sl- very challenging at Juniper Hills. They're, they're pretty flat. They're pretty round. Um, aside from a a select few, but there was a a handful of ones that the greens were just kind of like kicked up, perched up a little bit um, and kind of sitting in a little kind of little area that just made, made each shot feel, I I don't know. It just felt kind of, kind of nice and comfortable, um, but also kind of challenging because if you miss long, you were either kind of on a hill or in, uh, in some trees. So you had to still be careful um, but I just, I liked the visual, I liked visually some of the shots at the second shots at Juniper Hills into, into some of those greens. Ritter farm, a, another golf course where I signed up, I was solo kind of a rainy day in the spring, um, played with two guys. One guy who was getting off his, his graveyard shift, uh, working at the, uh, he works at, I think it was a stop and shop. He worked in kind of the trucking sp- trucking area of stop and shop and basically ran the trucks coming in and out and was the almost like a uh, air traffic controller for for the trucks uh doing their deliveries but that's how he spent his night and then he would head and so before heading home he would go play 18 holes at ritter at ritter farm so another like playing with guys who were just happy to be out um uh, which was which was really really fun two really good guys ritter farm is a pretty flat golf course uh, I, I liked the back nine. I thought it was a little bit more challenging. Uh, the 10th is a good, a good hole. You cross the road and the land is just a little bit more roll to it. Uh, some good dog legs. It's, gets kind of tight. You get those weird little dog legs where you're me kind of weaving through trees. Um, but the third hole is a very good par three. Um, I thought the 11th was a good par five. And 17 is kind of another wonky hole where you're literally playing between power lines and also um, among the power, like the power poles that those lines are on. So you you could hit shots through them. You could hit balls off of them. Um, Kind of a really the only time I've seen that I've seen power lines over holes, but these power, the power poles holding the power lines um, were, were in the middle of, of the ten, of the 17th fairway, which was kind of wild, but I liked, I liked the golf course again. You could very much convince me that Juniper is better than Ritter farm. Um, but I think those two are, are, are pretty comparable, um, depending on what you like and, and, and your experience there. Country club of Wilbraham, a course I played a USGA four ball, uh, event in, I was in the group behind Shane Bacon, which, uh, which was kind of wild. So I got to watch him hit some shots. Um, 
Shane did not seem enthusiastic or enthused about the golf course, and neither was I or my four ball partner, Jed. Um, man, this place is tight. Um, if I could come up with a comp, you know, I'm thinking like if you play butternut out in Stowe, where you're just looking at like slivers of sky between trees on a lot of on a lot of tee shots, especially on the back nine. Um, we played with two guys who had never really played golf up in New England. One was from Puerto Rico, Eric Morales. I actually interviewed him um, for my AmateurGolf.com podcast that I that I also host because he's a he's a pretty uh, well um, decorated amateur. Has played in USAMs and uh, has played in PGA Tour events. And he it was fun to watch him kind of try to figure out the place and four ball, you can hit some wacky shots, um, to give you a sense. If you've ever played country cover of Willerham, he hit a driver down the 18th fairway on the 11th hole. Um, and Jed and I hit four irons to, uh, just to keep it in the fairway and avoid running through the fairway. Cause it was just trees everywhere. And Eric blasted, I think he had eight iron into the, <laughs> into the par five, uh, and he made birdie. And so I, just kind of one of those places, it, it's, it's kind of wacky. It's really tight. Um, the third hole is a, maybe, man, it's, it was a strange goal to play competitive golf. Um, it is a par four, you a driver, you gotta, you gotta hit a pretty good shot to just kind of get far enough down to beat the dog leg. And then you beat the dog leg and there is a huge tree in the middle of the fairway in full bloom that is really if you hit it too close you're 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 hitting like a bump and run underneath this tree and the limbs are not high i mean it's it's a full it's a full tree um it's not dead it's not kind of it's not a pine tree it's a it's like a maple or something that's ready to catch a whole lot of golf shots i think one guy in our group hit a hit his hit a wedge into it kind of hit it thin because he was just trying to get it up in the air it's it's just a wacky hole um so that's cut your couple wilberham just overall you know it's fine it's a it's a public spot it's out in western mass um you know the pro is very nice the pro actually happens to be ryan downs's uncle um bobby downs and he you know i've, I've chatted with him a few times and and um maybe i'll go out there and see it again when i don't have to grind for pars and try to make birdies in a in the usga qualifier um maybe get some more pictures because i that's the thing i did not get to do out there i took a took a few as we were waiting for for uh, shots to be hit or i had to get a picture of the tree because i was bananas um swansea in uh swansea mass an 18 holer i played this one also, uh, on the same day, I played Tuasit and Wampanoag. Um, you know, another golf course that's just fine. I actually played this one all by myself, went around pretty quickly, which allowed me to play uh, two more rounds that day, um, or two more nine-hole rounds that day. Again, Juniper, Ritter, Country Club of Wilbraham, and Swansea all fall very much in this kind of, in this window of, of, uh, of golf courses. Nothing really great to report, so I'm just going to kind of move on through. Number 12 is Marion Golf Club. Uh, played nine holes here in September. I would have played more. I would have gone around again, um, but I am, it was kind of at the point of battling a little bit of golfer's elbow, so nine holes was about all I could take. But really charming, super quirky, and I, I was in a, it was a golfer's journal kind of tea time takeover where they just got all the tea times from three thirty to the end of the day and they encouraged their their subscribers to to show up and just pair up and play. Um so it was it was kind of a nice relaxed Friday evening down um down in Marion. Third hole is kind of the famous one you're hitting you know shot over a wall um, on the par three. The eighth hole is another par three where you're hitting over a wall. There's, you're kind of close to the water. You don't really get near the water. And greens are super round. Bunkers are kind of tired. You're hitting over berms. You're hitting over rock walls. You're hitting over trees, around trees. Um, the second hole, you think the tee shot is 
a straightaway drivable par four, but that's the seventh green. Um, and it's a dead dog leg right. And so you got to hit the right iron or club off the tee to, uh, to not reach the seventh. And I uh, think you have an eagle putt when you're then looking at a, an awkward shot into the second green. So quirky as hell. People might think, why, why is this at 12? It's a place that I was bummed to leave and not get to play again. I think that says something about the place. Um, and I just, I like that type of golf. It, it was kind of the best of the nine holers I played. And I thought it should get a bump above Fresh Pond and Furnace Brook and Treehouse and John F. Parker. I think it was, it's just, it's better than all of those places by enough. Um, again, you could convince me or you could convince yourself that it shouldn't be above a Swansea and a Country Club of Wilbraham and a Ritter Farm and Juniper, but there's just something about it that I liked more. And I'm, I'm looking forward to going back down and, and having more time to play it and, and check it out. So that's number 12. 11 is Gannon. Played here twice, once in a practice round and then once in a mass mid-am qualifier. Super short, but very odd lines off tees where you know, you're kind of forced to hit some irons. You can hit driver if you feel really good with driver. And you could reach a, probably a ton of greens. Uh, have a bunch of little eagle chips and, and, and maybe some easy birdies. 18th hole is a monstrous par 5 closer where you just need to hit two really good shots to even have a, you know, a wedge in your hand, just a wild one after playing such a kind of a short course from, from that point in. Um, I just found it really, really, uh, really good as far as the challenge. Um, it was in pretty good shape. You know, I think bunkers are always a thing you can gripe about at this level of golf. Um, it's fully public. It was easy enough to get on as a, when I, when I made a tee time, I enjoyed playing it competitively, which I think says something too. uh, some funny blind shots out there that balls can kind of go missing. We spent some time looking for, for some shots. Um, but overall, if you take out the 12th hole there, which is another kind of really odd, not great hole, it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good set of 18 holes for, for what it is. And for where I put it, I think it kind of belongs in that, in the kind of the top class of this middle 10. Four Oaks I played in, man, I played in November. It was cold. It was windy. Um, some of the routing is bananas. I think it's the only course I was made to ride a golf cart, which I was happy about. I love to walk off court golf courses. Um, I think this one, if the holes were routed in a way, the 18 holes are actually really strong. Um, I found them, I found them to be really good, uh, and engaging, but you're playing in kind of around a uh, housing development, which means you have some really long walks between or rides in my case between, um, tees and or greens and tees. So that kind of hurt it a little bit. That's what had it at 10 versus maybe a little higher. Uh, I could imagine in the summer, it's probably really busy. It's probably hard because it's, if it gets dry, you can get some spots where you can't hit driver. We could hit driver everywhere. It was like 45 degrees and windy and, um, you just got up and hit, you just kind of hit driver and tried to keep it in play. Um, but I'm sure this place is a challenging spot when the weather is dry and it's windy and balls can kind of careen in some different spots, but really liked four Oaks. And I, I'd like to get back there and play it again, which is another sign that it's uh, it's pretty good. I wish you could walk it though. A Kushnet Valley, a Kushnet river Valley and a Kushnet mass. Um, another trip kind of down to that su- Southern part near, you know, maybe where near, near Marion is another part of the state that I would never go to if it wasn't for this, which is another kind of nice part about this whole, this whole thing. Um, man, this place is kind of your quintessential, typical, uh, public new England golf course. As far as you're, you're going to play some holes through trees. You're going to play some holes that don't feel like they belong to the other holes, uh, it was in, it was in very good shape. I played here in August, um, of this year and I thought it was engaging. I got to play with some friends. Um, a buddy of mine was up from New Jersey. Um, he was working in Brockton, so he needed a place kind of in that area. Um, I drove all the way down from Hooper the morning of this when up in Walpole, New Hampshire, I was up there playing, drove all the way down, 
uh, certainly golf courses that I would regret driving that far to play. I did not regret it when I was done. And I think that says something. It is a bare bones. There are very little frills here. You show up your, the, the clubhouse is, is a trailer. And frankly, it's a tired, uh, trailer. You get places like Butterbrook where you feel like they, you know, put some energy into making it feel like, you know, the lights are, <laughs> the lights are turned on and you can get food and you can get a beer or soda or whatever you, whatever you want. Uh, what Butterbrook would feel like in 15 years if they, maybe just stopped giving um, much care to it. And that can be a turnoff right when you get in. Um, they've got a range that's pretty good. They've got a big putting green. Um, also, I was really pleasantly surprised. This is this kind of goes to one of those things that I think some people complain about when it comes to golf courses and feeling unwelcome. And I had the opposite feeling at Akushna River Valley. I know I just said the kind of trailer vibe, the double wide, uh, there was no food. Everything was kind of closed. It was dark. There were still the plexiglass up kind of remnants of COVID. Like there are all these little things you're like, Oh man, what is this place going to be like? Golf course is good. We made the turn and we were told at three o'clock when we teed off or like two 30, we were the last tee time and we had two hours to make, uh, make the 10th tee or we'd run into the, their evening league. We got stuck behind two people who were in no rush. Um, and we made it to the 10th tee at like two hours and five minutes after. So we were, we were, and we were, they could have easily told us like, sorry, you got to go home. Um, we warned you and you didn't play fast enough. And these guys in the league, the league had already started. Um, they let us, they let us jump out and they were compl- There was no gripes. They were just, happy to let us go through. Um, so I thought that was, that was like a really nice moment over the course of the year when you can absolutely run into places that just have no time for anybody who's kind of in their way. Um, and we were absolutely in their way that time and they were great and let us play through. So kudos to Akushna River Valley. The last like five of the last six holes are completely different than the rest. You're playing through trees. There's some kind of, I got a a little bit of red tail energy through the kind of the middle of the front nine. Um, And then you get, then you play kind of down through some woods and then you get to, you walk from, man, is it 11 to 12 and 12 is open and marshy. Another kind of Butterbrook comparison where, you know, you play the, the front nine and then 10, 11, and then you get out and you play 12 through 16, 12 through 17. And it's just completely, it feels like you're on a different golf course. Acoustic River Valley has that same, has that same, um, energy. There's just a lot of marsh and you got to kind of play and maneuver around some marsh. Um, but kind of a, a, a really good golf course. I liked it. They were great to us, which I appreciate. Um, really no frills there. Brookside club, the last public on this list which kind of makes me you know I don't does I don't feel great when I say that cuz I think it was it's an okay golf course it's in outstanding condition and from what I've heard from people I've played it once I played it in April I've heard it's always in awesome shape I got to play it by myself it was a quiet Friday morning um April and May I try as often as I can to just go play on a Friday morning before uh things get too crazy and you know the courses has some odd holes you're playing by myself i was really leaning on my on my gps to help me figure out like where the hell is this hole going what trees am i hitting over off the tee to hit hit it in the fairway um another place that's got a lot of long walks it's another development um it's got some funny holes that are kind of just like routed through um some of the houses um man i had a wedge shot into one hole on the back that I felt like, man, if I blade this, I am paying for a window. <laughs> um, so it's kind of, it's got a little bit of that, um, that feeling to it, but it's, it's got some good holes, especially kind of through, you know, you play these, you play how golf courses that go through houses. And I, I know it's a realistic thing in the nineties when courses were built. And this, this particular, this particular place had the same kind of, you get little chunks and sections and the middle section of the front, I thought was really good. Um, you play the six hole, which is a little par three. The fifth hole is terrible. You play the six hole, a little par three. 
then you walk and you play seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and that's kind of the I'd say that's the meat. That's the really good part of the golf course. Um so Brookside, uh it's also the first hole in my composite course, which I am slowly building and and doing on Instagram. And I'll I'll maybe I'll do a podcast on that too. Um and try not to make it an hour long. Let's get to Ipswich and Andover, two courses that are very, very much um inter- <laughs> interchangeable. They're both, they both have their quirks. They both have their challenges. From what I've heard, Andover is a very different golf course than it used to be because they had to reroute some of it to build houses. Um, you could kind of feel it. I played this in a mass am qualifier. I shot a smooth 84. Um, if I'm going to brag about shooting even par, I'm also going to, you know, let you know when I play terrible golf and I did that day. Uh, it feels, Andover feels a lot like, Andover was my sixth course and Ipswich is my seventh. Um, and they, you know, they could, they could both be in the same thing. They're kind of, for me, very similar golf courses. Uh, they're tight. Um, they're tight in kind of similar ways where you're dealing with out of bounds and you're dealing with houses and water hazards. Um, I think Ipswich's greens might be a little bit better. I think Andover as a golf course is just a touch better. Um, I don't have a lot of pictures of Andover. Um, the greens at Andover can get severe. I um, I made a triple bogey and I hit a green in regulation, which really really helped with the with the eighty four. I uh, got stuck above the eighth green. It was my seventeenth hole, so it wasn't uh, it wasn't like I was in the hunt and and this blew it for me. But man, I five putted. I hit it. I hit a wedge on the back of the green, the pin was in the front. I put it off the green, um, and then had two lip outs from like three and a half feet that rolled far enough away to uh, make my palms sweaty. So that's the kind of place you're going to get with Andover. Ipswich is the same. You're just kind of, they're very similar places. Willow Bend, another place that feels a little bit like Andover and Ipswich, but is a notch above. And these top five, um, I feel like the top four, four and five here. And then one, two, three are, um, for me are pretty well split. I think there's a gap between Willow Bend and Oakley. And then you get TPC Boston, Great Horse and Old Sandwich are my are my top three. Willow Bend is another place that's in exceptional shape. It's in Mashpee. It was my fifth favorite course. I got to play this course, six of these holes with Darren Clark um, as a little perk from a, a media event that they hosted in September, just wildly unexpected. I knew he was going to be there. And then, uh, we had lunch with him and he kind of regaled us with stories. He had just, I think he took third that previous Sunday in a champions tour event. And, you know, he was, this was Tuesday. He was still kind of butthurt about not winning. Um, he had lunch, he told us some stories, just exactly how you'd expect Darren Clark to be. And then we get ready to go play. And there's three groups of us, uh, going out from you know, different media outlets and whatever. And he's like, so am I playing six holes with each group? And the organizer of the event said, yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, we're playing with Darren Clark. So I got to play the middle six holes with Darren Clark, which was, which was awesome. Um, Willow Bend is, is like a set of good golf holes there. They have 27 there. I played the Bay and the Bog. Um, I'd say the Bog is the better of those two nines that I got to play. Um, bay has some potential, but there's a lot of kind of views of the bay and of water that are that are blocked. Um, you know, there's just there's just there's for me there was something missing that it definitely made it a top five course, absolutely a top five course this year. I think some people would argue it could be a top three course out of these five that I played because um, I know a lot of people really like it. It's not completely my style of golf that I that I like playing. Um, the the bog side, the first few holes, eleven is a good par three, um, and then you kind of get out into the open where you're literally playing over bogs. And um, the fifth hole and the sixth hole, which are the fourteenth and fifteenth, um, on the on the eighteen hole routing that I played are the two strongest holes. Uh, there's a par three downhill. I think people love this hole. There's a barn off to the right of the green. It's fine. I mean, it's a, it's a good hole. It has a little bit of dramatic uh, feel to it because you are leaving these kind of wooded holes and kind of playing through some narrow areas. And then you, you're out and it's like this nice pressure valve release. Um, 
but all told it's like the green is fine uh it's not terribly dramatic there's no real trouble i watched the final groups of the mass mid-am play it uh in september and you know they just got up and hit their shots there were, there wasn't much um thinking about it there's a little bit of wind they all ended up in really the same spot just kind of left side of the green and all two putted for for par and went on their way. I mean, Ricky Steinmetz was crushing all of them, um, but it's not super dramatic. I think the next hole is the best hole on the golf course. It's a downhill tee shot. You can take on some bunkers and get as close to the bog, which kind of runs across the fairway. And then you hit um, up back kind of up the hill to the green. It's the best hole on the course, um, I would say. But again, in my Instagram, I said there's no real signature hole or like set of holes. And someone, so, someone kind of in the comments uh, brought up those two holes. And, you know, they're very good holes. I don't see them as, as signature holes. And if they are the signature, signature holes, then I think that says a little bit about the other 16 holes that you've got. Um, but outstanding shape, really cool greens, um, just not really my vibe. And oh, I did it. There it is. All right. Um, from now on, I'm never using the word vibe again. And that's why I put Oakley above it. I'd rather walk off the 18th green at Oakley and play it again. And that's another big thing for me. So finishing Willowbend, um, I didn't really have any draw or desire to go back and play it again um, in that moment. Oakley, I actually played with a couple of guys who reached out to me from my newsletter and invited me to play. And I had a great day with them. It was a lot of fun and I left and they all continued to play. So we played 18 and I had to go home. Um, I had kind of a, I had to, I had to be home. So I was bummed to not be able to go and tee it up again and play another few holes with them. Um, Oakley is short. Oakley has some insane greens. Uh, a lot of three putts uh, are always lurking, even though the greens aren't huge. The slopes are really, really diabolical. Um, you know, as far as a place that I would want to play like every single day, maybe not, but definitely a place when I'm once I'm there, I'd want to loop it again. I'd want to go and play like four or five more holes because it is. It is kind of short enough. The walk is easy enough. The routing is really tight. Um, so that's part of the reason I I put it above Willow Bend. I just I think I think for me it's the type of golf that I that I prefer. Even though I'm not a great putter uh, and I don't have a very good short game, I just like playing those types of golf courses that just give you a little bit more space off the tee, um, engage you with those second shots in a little bit of a different way. Um, so that's why Oakley Oakley gets the nod above Willow Bend. Again, you could absolutely flip these and you would not be wrong. Um, this is just how I feel about these places. Number three, number two, and number one, TPC Boston. Had never played there before, had walked it a bunch during those PGA Tour years when the Deutsche Bank and the Dell Technologies was held here. So I had a pretty good sense of the holes, uh, had a pretty good sense of the routing and what it was going to be like. Um, Really a great, really great golf course. Um, I think for some people, it gets that bump and it creates that energy because it's a PGA Tour stop. And now it's an LPGA Tour stop, which is awesome too. I'm so stoked that the LPGA is going to be back in August and September over Labor Day weekend um, hosting there. I think that's, that's really good for, uh, for the area and for women's golf in the area and for golf in general in the area. Um, the first hole stinks. And it just has that TPC feeling like the greens aren't super interesting. The par threes are really, really good. Um, the third is a good one. I think the, is it the eighth hole? I think it's the eighth is the other par three on the front that isn't, isn't really um, all that great. And then 11 is, is strong and 16 is, is a kind of their, their signature hole over water, short little hole. I think the finish is what, kind of makes this the third course for me uh and and kind of put it above oakley and willow bend um but i think clearly it's it's the it's the next tier up the finish is is, is really good um 
like the 15th, the 16th, the 17th, and the 18th are good holes. The 17th is kind of my favorite. And I think it's because it's just got that, it looks a little bit more New Englandy. Um, the 12th hole is a, is a really good par five that I think they play as a par four uh, when the pros played it. Cause it is a par 73 as a, as just a guest playing there. Um, but it's not, you know, TBC Boston is not super challenging. You can score there. There's not a lot of trouble lurking. The greens are not really that challenging to putt, which is why scores at, you know, Deutsche Bank of the Dell Technologies was, were so low. Um, the 18th green in person, it, it's amazing that guys can save par and make birdie um, from green side with millions of dollars on the line because the green is is completely wonky and extreme. And I was down the left trying to save par um, in the big fall fall uh, fall off area there, left left and long, and I couldn't imagine with you know, people having drinks and chatting and trying to focus and hit a chip shot to, uh, to win a golf tournament. So that was kind of a neat experience to have. Number two is great horse right on the heels of, uh, of number 25. I played Elmcrest and then the next day and the day after that, I got to play great horse twice in a row. Um, great horse is like maybe unlike any other experience that I've had, um, on the good side, I'd say Elmcrest is on the, the other side of the spectrum, but to get to stay on the property for two nights and hang out at the pool. It was 95 degrees when we were there. Um, so that, that whole experience is, is, is really good. Um, really laid back, really good food. Um, the golf course is also excellent. It is in ridiculously good shape from T through green bunkers are wild. Brian Silva came in and reformed a lot of them and built a lot of them and redid kind of, that seems to be the work that he mainly did when it was uh, Hamden country club back in the day before it became great horse um, and was bought by new owners. It's got a really cool double green in the middle of the, of the front nine. And it's just a really hard golf course. And so it can eat you alive. For me, the thing that I don't love about it is it feels like a lot of the tee shots are a touch redundant. Um, you've got a lot of kind of cross center line bunkering and I get it. It's because there is not a lot of land movement on one side of the road. And so you've got to create a little bit of depth and a little bit of challenge off the tee and bunkering certainly does that. Um, and it definitely does that a great horse. Greens are challenging to putt. Um, you can score there as well if you just get the ball in the right place and you drive it well. Um, it is a very hard walk. We walked it the first day. We rode the second day. Um, this is my, you know, it was hot. And walking from, once you cross the road after 14 and you play the par 3 15th and then walk 16, 17, 18, it is, a, it, you're exhausted. Um, and so we, we decided to ride the, the second day. So we got both experiences, which was great. Um, just a really good, really strong golf course that if you can go play it, if you can go watch any mass event there, because mass golf has a bunch, just, just go check it out. Cause it's a really neat place to go and spend a couple hours and follow some groups playing or hang out at the, at the clubhouse and just kind of take in the view of people playing 18. Um, 18 is not a great finisher. People have, uh, have let me know how much they, dislike that hole. Um, but overall great horse comes in at number two. And then finally old sandwich. Um, I get asked a lot and I think I should do a whole kind of podcast or something about like how I'm getting onto some of these golf courses, especially when I'm talking about TPC Boston, great horse and old sandwiches as three that I got to play this year. This was a stroke of friendship. Um, I have a friend, Kevin Van Cleef, who has been on this podcast who works at the club and old sandwich to their credit is very good about giving employees the opportunity to have guests on the golf course. And that's how I found my way playing it this October. Uh, we got a afternoon tea time. We finished in the dark and it was a really, I mean, old sandwich is, is, is incredible. The whole experience from, even from what I got is just, the guest of an employee where, you know, we were not going to the clubhouse. We did not go to the pro shop. We 
went from the car to the first tee. We took that lovely walk across the bridge, putted, you know, for a little bit um, on the practice green right by the first tee, and then we were off and we played. And the walk is so easy. I've never played a core Crenshaw before, and they always talk about how they're very good at creating land and space um, for a golf course and finding land and space for a golf course, not necessarily creating. That's the wrong word. They're kind of naturally allow uh, people to just walk through the land and happen to you know hit golf shots as they do it. And that's exactly what it felt like. It never felt like you're fighting the land or playing a hole that is just to get you to another place. Um, the the holes are all really good. And I also love that, you know, we've got, I think it's got five par threes. There's no core crunch out. It doesn't really, they're okay. Kind of breaking some of the, some of the rules of, of design and, and doing their own thing. If it's going to make the golf course um, better uh, and make it its best for, for the space. So, I mean, old sandwich, I, I have, can't really post any pictures about it yet. I'm trying to be respectful of, of Kevin who, you know, if a, if a, if a member brings me on and they say I can post stuff, I will, you know, be happy to share the video and pictures I took while I was, while I've been there. But for, for now, unfortunately, uh, I've got to kind of keep those holstered, um, until maybe I make it back again and maybe I won't. And maybe those pictures will just be, uh, be for me, but we will, we'll see when, when that happens, maybe it will happen again. Um, that I get out there with, with someone who, uh, has, who's paying their dues to, uh, to be there and I can, kind of get the full member experience but it is on this list i'd say it's the only golf course that is a like drop everything and go play whatever the heck you have planned whatever day it is um you figure out a way to get down to plymouth and play old sandwich i think great horse and tpc boston are really really good um and i loved playing them and i love the experience of being at both of them but I, for me, like there, I wouldn't tell anybody at drop the hat, like take a day off from work, call in sick, cancel that surgery, whatever it is you have going on. Old Sandwich, for me, of the 25 new ones I played, uh, falls in that category. You might think I'm crazy for not putting Great Horse or TPC Boss, and that might, be, might make me sound um, crazy, but that's that's fine. I would definitely play great horse and i would definitely play tpc boston again they are places i would go back to um and i would kind of do my best to change plans but old sandwich is the place where i'm stopping everything i'm doing and i'm going to play old sandwich so that was way longer than i thought it would be which is absolutely fine it was uh kind of nice to just get get all these thoughts out and talk to people um, and talk to you guys. So thanks for listening. Um, thank you for watching. If you are on YouTube, appreciate it. Hopefully there'll be more of these and I get better. Um, I get better on camera. I get better kind of just rapping solo. I don't use the word vibe anymore. And until next time, uh, thanks for listening. Please subscribe. Please go follow base date underscore golf on Instagram. And uh, we will see you next time.